Denny's system is broken down into four zones. Each zone uses particular lines to match the patterns being used and the kind of retrieve used to induce a response from the fish. When we take a look at the zones, here's what I consider the top zone, and I'm going to show you how I think it needs to be covered and fished. That top zone, really, what I call zone number one, extends right on across, right up to our shoreline area, and it goes from the surface down, and believe it or not, this zone is only four, maybe five inches at the most. Folks, when you're fishing lakes, the first zone we need to look at extends from the surface down about four to five inches. That's the zone where you see fish when you see them rising out there. They're either taking adults or they're taking pupa such as mayfly, caddisfly, damsel or midges, they'll work their way up to the top and when they reach that top zone, that's where they emerge in to adult insects. And to fish that zone effectively, it really, it's the easiest zone to tell what's going on on a lake because it's, as you fish the lake and you see fish working, you know they're taking one of four insects. Any of the insects coming up through here in the midge is the one exception. It comes in a manner like this, straight up. The rest of these guys are going to come up on angles, rest and fall down, come up, rest and fall down, and they'll keep working until they get up into this zone. When they reach this zone, they're pretty much still, and they're trying to break out of their nymphal chuck to become the adult. Once they're the adult, then we find that insect up here and we imitate that with a dry fly. Stop and think about it. You see the fish that's sitting right here and you're trying to catch this guy, when you cast to him, the biggest mistake that I see guys make is they'll put a long cast out there and they'll start retrieving their fly and if they make a 40, 50 foot cast and bring it all the way back to the boat, the one thing, and I'm going to mention it more than once in this video, is once you see that fish and he's in this top zone, it only extends down four or five inches. You cannot let your fly get below that fish because once your fly drops to this point right here, maybe only be a couple inches underneath the water, if he's right up on the top, you're not going to catch him because they never look down and never feed below the level they're holding. That's going to be important for you to understand regardless of what zone you find the fish in. So the line that will take you there and keep you there the longest is the one that's going to be the most effective for you. So when you're thinking about these fish out here, here are the lines that I recommend that you can use and use them effectively in that zone. The floating line, the intermediate line, and the five foot clear tip. Cortland's new floating line is one of the better lines that we've got to fish that zone, or you can fish it with your camo. If you have a five or six foot clear tip, that's an excellent line to keep in that top zone also. But to show you how a clear floating line will best fish this zone, stop and think about when you put your fly out on the water like that and you start retrieving, you see those fish working out there. Most of the guys, if you're using small aquatic insects, we have to use slow moving retrieves like this because that's the insect that you're emulating is one that moves very slowly in the water. And actually when they get in that top zone, they're hardly even moving at all. We have to move our fly to stay in the zone, so if you use little slow pulls like this or a hand twist like this and bring it back slowly like this, but you're only going to bring it back three or four feet. The ideal way to fish that top zone when they're in that four or five inches, slowly remove your cast without spooking the water, put it right back out there, and then come back like this. Bring it back four or five feet with either one of these retrieves. If they don't take, you pick it up, slowly remove it without spooking them, and move it about four or five feet to the left and fish that spot. Now that's what you do when you don't see fish working, but if you see them working out there, you're really sight fishing them. Unless they're gulping, which means they're coming up eating and constantly moving, that's an easy one to catch, that fish is, because you're always leading them, just like a passer leads a receiver in football. So all you have to do, put your cast out there. If you don't get hit, pick it up, move it over four or five feet and cast again. Unless you see fish working out there, then you're casting to them. Just remember, if you're casting where a fish is feeding out there, it's always easier for me if I cast into shore 
because then I know that fish is either moving to the left or right, and I got a 50% chance of guessing. If I look long enough, I'll see which way he's going, and all I have to do is lead him. But if you fish out here in open water, that's going to be a different situation. If I put my cast on a fish that I see working over there, I don't know if he's going to the left or to the right or away from me or toward me. So I've got one chance in four in being right. And remember this, any cast you guys make with any line, no matter where you throw it, the minute you pick this up and put it on the water when fish are in that top zone, you're going to spook them. They're going to move to the left, the right, they're going to vacate this area. Which way your fly going to come back? your fly is going to follow the line of the cast you just made coming back through an area that's void of fish. You're going to have a very difficult time catching many fish when you do that. So the reason for telling you that is the later length that you use and the tippet size become very very critical especially in water that's clear like this. So you have to be able to retrieve your fly back away from that particular zone that you just cast and the most that you're going to get out of this cast has to do with leader length. Those are the fish you'll catch. Anything from the end of my line back to my rod tip are going to spook. And if they're in that top zone, they're not going to be there. You still have a chance if those fish are in zone two, if they're three, four, five feet down, your fly will drop into that zone. You still got a chance for those guys. But if you're trying to sight fish them and you're fishing this top four or five inches, folks, just remember, you line everything. So if you're working a shoreline area and you see an indentation going in, don't cast all the way to the back of that area. Drop your fly short of it first, bring it back, and extend your cast back in. Those are the most important things to remember anytime you're fishing a lake, but this floating line is an ideal line to use when they're up in that top zone. So try it. I think you'll find it's very rewarding. No margin for error. So if you're not a good caster, hone up on those casting skills. Fly leaders and tippets are a critical part of Denny's system for stillwater angling. Without careful choices here, all you've learned about fly lines, fly selection, and retrieves may not matter. Okay, folks, when it comes to leaders, I think one of the most misunderstood and, and probably one of the biggest problems we have in our presentation on stillwater is a lack of knowledge and how to set up the proper leader system so it'll cast well and fish well for you. Casting, I know a lot of great casters that can't catch a fish if their life depended on it. I know a lot of guys that can't cast 20 feet to catch fish all the time. But one of the keys, regardless, is a leader that is balanced to the system that you use. You know, we're so used to fishing dry flies and getting little tiny flies and getting down to 5X and 6X, and maybe 7X uh, tippets out there. When you're fishing in lakes, you're really, you have a chance of catching some awfully big fish in double digit size. Certainly a lot of four to five, six pound fish are available to you. So now that we have fluorocarbon available, let me tell you the system that I prefer to use. I start with a nine foot 2X. I like a limp leader and that's why I use Climax. There's a lot of good leaders out there, but I prefer to use this leader nine feet 2X, but that's not necessarily what I'm gonna fish with. That's where I'm gonna start. That'll go on the end of my line, and behind that, I'm going to run three feet of 3X fluorocarbon. How important is fluorocarbon? There's a lot of times it's not important. The sun will determine whether it's important or not. Water, cloudy or not, whether it's clear or off color, can help determine it. A lack of sunlight can help determine it. But if you've got a bright sun and you're using fluorocarbon, folks, I'm telling you, it makes a difference. There's sometimes you don't need it, but why be switching back and forth? This, these two products are not the area to skimp and cut. Use good leaders. Get good fluorocarbon. There's a knock on fluorocarbon, and I've heard a lot of guys tell me that it's not real strong with knot strengths. I think basically they're probably right in terms of its comparison to monofilament, but the main thing, there's some really good fluorocarbon leader or tip of material out there, and that's what I'm always going to have on the end of my lines. But guess what? 3X, this particular 3X is seven pound test, and I rarely go below that. If you have to get longer because the conditions are tougher, you're just not comfortable with casting the line out there and you think that it's going to affect your success, you want to go longer, I'm not changing this whole system. All I'll do is add three more feet of fluorocarbon and go to 4X, and I'll get out to 15 feet. The key to remember on any lake you fish, always match leader length 
tippet size, fly size, all of that has to be matched with the conditions that you face. Remember I mentioned at the beginning, the sky, is it sunny or off color? If it's cloudy, that makes a difference. The water, is it clear or off color? Is the water flat or choppy? Are we dealing with warm or cold temperatures? And what is the depth of the lake that you're fishing and the water that you're fishing? Those factors dictate the behavior of the fish. All we have to do is adjust our tackle and our presentation techniques to those conditions as well. That's what's going to determine how successful you are. So when it comes to these type of things, you know what attracts the fish to your fly? Movement, motion. You get that by the way the fly is tied, the retrieve you use, and the other one, a lot of people don't think about this one, has to do with the knot that you use that you tie it with. I used to use an improved clinch for many, many years, 25, 28 years. Now I use a loop knot that allows our fly to get free movement in the water. And I think that's really, really critical. So the basic thing I'm thinking of right now is to put on a system that will work no matter where I go, and I don't have to change it. So that's what I go with. I start with a 9 foot 2x, add 3 feet of 3x, and I rarely, rarely ever let it get below 12 feet. 12 to 15 feet are most of the tippet. And you got to remember, what do they see next to your fly? Your tippet. A lot of ways to do this, folks. There's no one way to do it. There's a lot of ways to do it. But this system I find very effective no matter what country, what state, what area of the country that I'm fishing. It's the same system everywhere I go. It'll work for me and it'll work for you. So let me show you how I tie that loop knot. All right, you start, folks, with a loop knot with an overhand knot. Make it about this far from into your leader. You don't need to hold on to it afterward. Just take the end of your leader between your thumb and index finger. Take the fly you're going to tie on. And I was always taught to go up to the bottom of this. And you bring it down. Now, this is 3x with a size 10 fly. Let the fly hang directly below this little loop right here. Grab it with your left hand like so. Then with the tag end, I'm going to push it through away towards you like this. I'll grab it with my teeth, pull it through. Now I've gone through away. The next step is to come over the leader toward me twice, over once, over and under twice. And it'll look like this. I'll hold the line in my hand, go over once, go over twice. When I do that, you see the little V right here in the middle of the circle? I'm going to come through with the tag in now toward me, through that V, which takes you through the circle. I hold it with my teeth and I push my hands away until you can't see this loop anymore. Now you see there's a little loop right there. Now I'll take the fly and the leader, pull them in opposite direction, and I hear a little popping sound, and we've come up with this little tiny loop right here for your fly to move freely. You could make it as big as this if you wanted to and it'll still work. The main thing is the knot's 100%. My fly's free to move on the end. And I'm telling you, that's a part of presentation that's going to catch a lot more fish for you. The more free you have that fly moving and breathing in the water, the more fish you're going to attract.